When a powerful billionaire pays more than $13,000 a bottle for a couple of cases of rare vintage wine, he expects to get what he pays for. But the 24 bottles Florida energy tycoon William Koch bought for $320,000 in 2005 turned out to be fake. And now Koch is facing off in court with fellow billionaire Eric Greenberg, who sold him the wine. We want to get to the bottom of this case with Ray Isle, executive wine editor of Food & Wine magazine. And also with us is Sonny Hostin, a CNN legal analyst. It's great to have both of you with us. Good morning. Yes. Nice to Thanks. see you. Absolutely. How frequently does this happen, Ray? <laughs> well, you know, a lot of the wine that's sold in the world is not $30,000 a bottle. Correct. But, um, but Thank at, goodness. But at that super high level, there's actually a real problem right now with, with counterfeit bottles of wine, with, with wines that, you know, aren't what they're purporting to be. How does that happen? Well, what, what happens with someone who really wants to fool someone and make a lot of money doing it, but in the, in the case of, like, a bottle like this one I've got here, um, you know, you can, you can take an old bottle, mm -hmm. 1950, I mean, this is an ostensibly 1915 Domain Romane Conti. Um, this bottle is really old. The glass is really it's old. Really old. Mm. That label, if you look at it very closely, is not that old. Right. And additionally, there's a little, little black mark in the middle of the label from the person who sold the wine, or ostensibly sold the wine back in right. 1915, that ought to be lower on the label. So this wasn't the real thing, but it did sell at auction for thousands of dollars. So, the, I mean, I guess the, the point here is that, I mean, people buy this wine not with the, not with the intention of drinking it. They buy it for investments, right? Absolutely. This right. is, this is um, old, rare, collectible. That's the key things. Right. Um, so, Sonny, how, I mean, th how unusual is a case like this? You know, I, I don't think it's unusual for someone to sue someone else if they feel that they've been defrauded, right? But this time you have people that have the means to bring it to court. I mean, my understanding is that both sides have spent millions of dollars <laughs> litigating this case over $300,000. Mm -hmm. But the point is, if you feel like someone duped you, 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 you want your day in court. So the, the, some of this is the principle of the matter and not the return on the investment. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Absolutely. A friend of mine says, you know, these, these guys, these really rich guys, they're all looking for unicorns. And they get really, <laughs> really irritated when it turns out they bought a horse with a horn tape to its head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as so, would anyone. As would anyone. You know, fair enough. It's, it's $300,000 worth of So wine. at that level, how many horses with horn tapes to their head, with horns taped to their head are there? Well, I mean, no, is no there a real thing? No because that's the problem with fraud and, and counterfeiting. You, I mean, until you discover it, you don't know that it's fake and a lot of this never gets opened and it just gets traded back and forth in the auction market but it's definitely if you're in that realm of buying these kind of wines I would be wary these days I would I would get experts to come in and check anything you wanted to Sonny can you prove a case like this that somebody yeah and, and I think the point is you get the experts in this particular case Greenberg had an expert who told him that one of his bottles, bottle 41, which I think is sort of the smoking bottle in this case, <laughs> was counterfeit and put a sticker on it. Well, that same sticker in that same bottle is in Coke's cellar. And he had the same expert come in and say, hey, this is the same bottle that I marked before. And I think that really is going to be very crucial in this case, because if you're going to buy something like this, have an expert and and coke had that expert right. i mean i'm looking at this it looks pretty yeah. good to me it looks yeah. i mean it, it looks old so how do you tell ray i mean well you know it's again it's that you know if you if you've dealt with old wines before this actually isn't that great a fake because right. the label is pretty clearly not from the era of the of the bottle although right. it's been doctored to look like it um but the thing is they also get old wines you know, right. relabel them so it tastes old. Right? Can and you taste test it's like, it? Many, Is there a how, way to well, actually? How many determine? bottles of 1915 Domain Romney Conti have you had? I mean, exactly. <laughs> well, or, I mean, or me? Okay. Uh, yeah, you know. but even at the highest level, can people taste it's, a difference? You know, people who have who taste a lot of really high end old wine. I know some sommeliers who are in that world that they know. You know, they they they've got that tuning fork kind of sense of when something's off. Right. But there's no, you know. It's an aesthetic judgment. It's very hard to say this is absolutely not what it's purporting to be based right. on taste. Right. Um, and it's, you know, it's fascinating. There's also, there's, you know, wineries are doing a lot to kind of prevent counterfeiting. The, well, the, the very high-end wineries, like um, these guys, Chateau Palmer, who are a, a Bordeaux, 500 buck a bottle Bordeaux. Right. Um, they're doing, they've got a new thing, which is a, a seal on the label that you can't open the bottle without breaking the seal. The seal has a QR code mm -hmm. um, wow. that you can zap yeah. with your phone, goes straight to the winery site, pulls up an image of this unreplicatable. Incredible. It's, it's quite Look wild. Ray Island, you know. Sunny Hostin. Thank you. Wild stuff, but interesting, too. <laughs> Who knew?